Welcome back everyone, welcome to a new video of mine. Sorry for not uploading uh, for a while now, or, well, for a day, I missed a day yesterday, but that's okay. Um, but I'm thinking that my upload schedule will have to be, uh, I, I won't be able to upload as, as often because I'm actually preparing for, uh, for this contest on Khan Academy, uh, including the, the subjects, uh, physics, mathematics, etc. biology and essentially uh, all you have to do is just record a video in line enlightening people about a certain subject like math or physics uh, the ones stated or the ones that are allowed um, <clears throat> and if you win then you gain a prize of a scholarship uh, I think it's approximately twenty five thousand dollars which is amazing and I forgot the rest of the prizes but there are a few other prizes and yeah, I'm thinking about doing that. Not not simply because I want the prize, partly that, but of of course. But also, I just want to you know do it for fun. But today I decided that I should make a bit of a recap video of what we've done. Well, this is gonna be just like part one or something because I can't fit all. Of, I kind of forgot that I was making these recap videos, and all of a sudden, I made so many videos without realizing that I should have probably done a recap video in between. So this is just going to be part one recap. We're just going to look at some concepts that we've looked at um, the past, the past videos. So let's get started. So inverting a three by three matrix. Yep. Remember this? Uh, yep. Got pretty confusing, didn't it? Anyway. And basically, um, this process started off with obviously setting up three by three matrix A in this case. And yeah, well, the, the values here don't matter. I just picked values at random. And then what happens here is uh, you essentially, well, the process, the, the next process here is called the matrix of minors, where uh, essentially you, whatever term you are, you're on, let's say zero, you actually cross out that term and leave, uh, and the remaining matrix, the remaining two by two matrix, you take the determinant of that, which is this, which is just A and A multiplied by D minus B multiplied by A, B, B multiplied c multiplied by b uh, so that's the determinant so just like this you write out the determinant so you you go along this uh, you go along uh you go along the matrix this way so that's crossed out right you cross out that terms row and column so it's like this like this you get the idea and then i didn't finish this here because it was quite a tedious process writing it all down then you find the determinant of these matrices, all of them. You're, you should end up with a new 3x3 three three matrix, right? And the next step is taking the matrix of cofactors and multiplying by this. The matrix is, of cofactors is basically just a checkerboard alternating between positive and negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. You don't really have to write this out. It's pretty simple. All you have to remember is that it starts with the plus sign and you can go from there. Okay, then... What happens after you multiply by the cofactors, again, you get a new matrix uh, here. So this is an important uh, part of, uh, this is actually an important bit from uh, later on. I'll discuss that in a bit. And then what you do next is you have to remember that this is the cofactor matrix. Then you take the adjugate of that cofactor matrix uh, or the adjoint. Uh, and if you remember from here, don't mind, don't mind my... Uh, physics practice, just some basic physics, kinematics. Um, basically, uh, two, for two by two matrices, you should remember that uh, a to the formula for. Well, I mean, this also applies to this form of uh, this inverting a three by three matrix or n by n matrix. Um, but anyway, all you have to do is apply the. You don't have to make any alterations to the two by two matrix. You just apply it into this formula. And then you, the adjoint of that matrix would just be um, the first uh, the first term and the final term swapped, and the second term and the third term uh, multiplied by negative, right? Uh, so then what happens? What happens with three by three matrices is uh, all you have to do is swap these terms across uh, across like this. So you keep the diagonal in the, in the middle and just swap these terms across. So essentially, it's just uh, so let's just add a tweak. I don't know if I mentioned this beforehand. So this is, 
um, in matrix A prime, let's say, because we took the adjoint of it. A prime, we have, uh, so the this, this, uh, you, you could say coordinate is, the coordinate of one would be row one, so one, row one, rows go first, and then column two, and that's one, right? But then the the adjoint of this matrix, so I guess you can say that prime, is actually row two, column one. So it, it's that pattern. So that's the new one. So that's basically what it is. So next concept. Oh, well, sorry, I forgot to mention the fact. So what you do, yeah, this video is going to be long. This is just one of the concepts. So we, essentially what you do is you take the first, after this, you, you have the adjoint. So that's one part of the one part of the formula that you've finished and now you have to find the determinant right so what you do is you go back to the cofactor matrix you multiply each term by each term of the original matrix and you add you add those uh, you add the product um and there's your determinant and then you just apply it into the formula and it spits out your uh, spits out your uh your inverse of a that was an interesting way of saying it. Uh, so, system of three equations. This is also something else we did. Matrix style, of course. Everything is matrix style here in linear algebra. So basically, what I've done here, what, what did I do here? Did I just substitute it back in? I'm not sure what that is. Not sure what I, what I did there. Anyway, system of three equations, right? Matrix style. Uh, so here we set up a system of three equations, right? And the normal way of doing it is quite tedious. So this is actually a form that, it, and if I'm not going to explain this thoroughly because I'm running out of time, but if you want to see the full video, uh, you can go back to that. Uh, but essentially all of the, the idea of this is you rewrite all of the terms in a matrix here, and then you multiply by X, Y, and Z. And you can tell by using the scalar multiplication. You can tell uh, uh, you multiply this by negative 1, right? Plus 2 times uh, y, right? This is equivalent. Plus minus 1 times z is equal to 9. So that's equivalent. You can go on with that as you'd like. So this is an equivalent way of describing this. And how it's usually done is you set this matrix to equal to a, bolded a. And this equal to some vector, column vector x. Usually it's lowercase, of course, because these are vectors, column vectors. And then that's equal to this vector, column vector B, right? So you get the equation AX equals B, right? And again, the intuition behind this is that you actually multiply both sides by the inverse of, uh, of A here. So they can isolate X, which is what we want to solve for. So that's actually quite interesting and obviously be like this right because the process of multiplying matrices is not commutative <clears throat> so this uh, this cancels out to the uh this cancels out to the identity matrix and then uh, all you have to do is solve for this a inverse times b and again i'm not going to go through the whole process of inverting a three by three matrix but all you have to do obviously any any identity matrix multiplied by x is just x um but all this is is just you find the you find the <clears throat> the inverse of this matrix a then you multiply it in this format by b which is uh which is this sorry and this is x so you get all your solutions for x y z okay that's is there anything here anything on the back okay now this is kind of not in order, so I kind of need to. Okay, that's that's part of the next video. Might I think should probably not mention that in this video. So I'm just gonna quickly. We're just gonna quickly look at some of these papers here. So here, for example. So let's see, let's see which one I should look at for first here. So here, I think I believe that this was the video on vectors, vector examples, or vector intuition. So 
I don't think I think we're missing the cover page here because I always add a title at the at the head at the header in the header. <laughs> I don't know the terminology for it. this section, but but anyway, basically, uh, we were classifying sets here. So uh, the idea here is that we're looking at vectors in R two, and all R two means is that all real values in a two uh, in that takes up like a two tuple. So R2, all real values in R2 could be a two tuple, and it usually is in two dimensions, right? This is what these are called, two tuples, such that Xi, or all of these terms, are a member of the reals, obviously, since it's an R2. And you can actually add some parameters, like uh, for, uh, for, uh, we can say 1 greater than or equal to, or less than, or, less than or equal to xi, which is less than or equal to 2, right? So we can set parameters like these. And brackets, right? Anyway, uh, that's, that might get, get a little confusing, and I don't want to actually explain everything that I explained in that f past video, so I'd recommend looking at that video. But anyway, a vector in R2 just means like a plane, for example. So it covers all of these, all of these possible real values in here, in a plane, right? However, vectors in R1 is, are only described by one um, horizontal line like these, like these axes. Uh, so here we, we, uh, we took a column vector, a column vector B, and the intuition behind adding these two vectors uh, is... I don't think I mentioned this in this video, but I actually covered this in a recent video, so maybe there's no point in mentioning this, but if we graph if we, if we graph A and we graph uh, well, we have to graph finish graphing A, of course. We're writing at standard position. I would recommend looking at my video on vectors. B, uh, you can do it like this, so it starts for So the, the intuition behind this, and what I described here is that you can graph A in any position, right? So you can take any coordinate x1 in this two-tuple form, x1, uh, x1, x2. And basically, you add, any, uh, you add the values in this, in, this, this, uh, in, in let's say, matrix A. So you add, add 3, and then you add negative 1. And that's a perfectly fine representation vector. So I'm running out of time now. Uh, hold on, what can I? What else can I say? Um, but anyway, uh, let me quickly give you an intuition behind addition of vectors, which I've already done. So essentially, you take if you're adding a plus b. This is b. This is a. Essentially, you're you're taking a's head and add and then adding to it b's tail so it's like this for example but i'm running out of time so i'm going to do part two very soon uh hopefully you enjoyed i might not upload in maybe about a day probably tomorrow but pardon me for that again it's just it's not really the fact that i'm lazy of course it's just that i'm hard at work on uh you know school work and uh and well obviously that competition that i was talking about so hopefully you enjoyed and have a nice day hello 谢谢大家。